We're live in Coach Leach's office. It is signing day 2019, number two. Signing day number two. We've got the full crew on hand here. Jess, QB, AB10, and Super Dave has joined us here. Dave, uh, two new recruits have come in, Jimmy Price and Nicholas Sheets. And, and let's start with Jimmy Price. He's 6'5", 295, Juco transfer, Tyler, Texas. He started his career at, at Stephen F. Austin. Well, you just kind of jumped right into things. Yeah, we were. Right? we're well, 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 no welcome. greetings. No, I, 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 I feel Super like Dave. I'm part of the crew too. Well, that's why I said the full crew's here. Well, you kind of excluded me. A little I didn't bit. mean. <laughs> I didn't mean you're. You are the family. You said the crew and then me. So well. You want, should, we, should we bump somebody? Is Dave, it? how are you today? Okay. Thank you very much. Welcome okay. in. Okay. Okay. It's great to see right. you. No, that, that's that's nice of you to ask. <laughs> yes, two two uh, two scholarships came in today. That, that's all we're really expected for today. So it's a drastic change from you know years past. It's it's very casual, very laid back around here. Not a whole a uh, lot of tension or anything. So uh, yeah, Jimmy Price, uh, you know, started out. Uh, Stephen F. Austin played quite a bit as a true freshman there. Um, so he's got you know some big game experience. Um, you know, went to Tyler Junior College and has three for two, so he does have a redshirt year if needed. But uh, obviously, the plan is to th- throw him in there and see what he can do. Offensive line, do we know position-wise what is? He'll start out a tackle. And, okay. You know, see what he, see if he can, um, you know, do that at this level, and then if not, you know, we can always move him inside. But you know, that, that was the big uh, priority for us to, to finish out the class was to get an O lineman and a D lineman. So uh, pretty much accomplished what we wanted to accomplish after. Uh, the December signing period. You, you said O-line and D-line. Nicholas Sheets was the other. 6'3", 255 from Greenwood, South Carolina. Um, and w- what's the story with Sheets here? Pretty good size, 6'3", 255. Yeah, just kind of, I mean, you know, D-linemen are hard to find. So just kind of scoured. Uh, you know, Coach Phelps went all over the country those last three weeks and uh, really went after, you know, whoever, um, you know, wherever they were located. We found some really good ones. And, and really like Nick, uh, the best of the group that, that we – you know, we're evaluating at that time. Um, had some early academic issues, so some schools, you know, had a bunch of initial interest, a bunch of offers, and then the bigger schools maybe dropped off and, and waited a little bit to, for his academic situation to be cleared up, which it has been in the last week or so. And 6'3", 255, a guy that you guys envision putting on some weight maybe and, and, and playing inside or staying outside? No, or I think he'll be an inside guy. Willie, yeah. Yeah, yeah. explosive kid, uh, really good first step, um, but he's he's a guy with a frame. He can – you know, 280, 285 type kid. Yeah, absolutely. I'm curious about your tackle position, just going back to that. Um, if Jimmy Price can slide in there, obviously Andre Dillard is a huge absence um, for you moving forward here. Is there a thought to moving Abe to the other side, or is it just too early to tell? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, you know, play with it a lot this spring. Absolutely, that's been talked about. You know, it could be a situation where, where Liam Ryan gets kicked outside. Um, you know, we have some young guys, Jared Kingston, Cade Beresford. So uh, we'll take a look at a lot of different situations. But the good news is, there's um, good bodies there. You know, it's it's not just you're you're hoping and praying some guy works out. That we, we do have some options. How much does uh, w- whether or not the blind side is the right side or the left side affect whether or not Abe is on the right or left ah, side I see for the quarterback? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and that's another obviously uh, interesting part of the spring is just the dynamic. I mean, we haven't had a left-handed quarterback, uh, you know, here. Uh, last one that I've ever been around, Jared Lorenzen. Uh, hey, uh, ooh, nice. A great player, yeah. great, great body, great, great, great everything. <laughs> He's the prototype, is he not? <laughs> He's what you're looking for. He was really good. <laughs> he was. He was awesome. Oh, he could spin the gym it. Rat, gym he was rat. really good. Yeah. Um, you you kind of touched on it a little bit, and I didn't mean to I didn't mean to cut you off if you had something. No, go ahead. Uh, Nicholas Sheets. We're all friends here. Yeah, by all <laughs> means. <laughs> by all means. He was. Uh, you know, this is the second signing day. This is the second year of the two signing periods. So, last year was everybody just kind of feeling it out. What's this process going to be like? And now this year, maybe you're a little more into it. But it's kind of different now when a guy lasts to the second signing day. What the, the, What's go, What's the process like now? Because this used to be the big day. And yeah, now. We, we, you know, you want to sign the majority of your class early just because if a kid's committed to you, you know, they're not committed to you unless they sign. Uh, if they don't sign in that December period, you know, they're looking for something else. Uh, so you try to sign the majority of your class early. Uh, we make a conscious effort to keep a few scholarships. There's going to be some guys left over, some guys overlooked, some late guys like Nick. Um, so we want to typically leave two or three left over, um, you know, for, for things that just pop up. I was just talking to Coach Spurrier down the hall about this, about what a relief to how today's almost effortless. You can breathe and everything. But because uh, when there was only that one signing day, 
guys would just have such a long time to keep getting pursued. It's almost like getting broken up with on a day <laughs> if, if a kid uh, ends up flipping to another school. How much weight does that take off of you, and how much does it help in this process for the whole staff? Yeah, I got more sleep last night than I had <laughs> <laughs> ever in signing day. Um, uh, that's another part of the er the early period is so good for us. Just the kids sign, you know, in February – uh, when it used to just be the February signing period, there was, you know, all kinds of schools would just come after our guys. You see if someone has success, you know, let's say a big school, USC, whoever misses out on one of their guys, oh, let's see who Washington State's recruiting, you know, and go after those guys. So um, it's been very um, advantageous to us the last two years. Um, you know, who, who's to say what would have happened with Max Borgie last year if it just kept going on um, with Stanford in the mix. So um, getting him locked up early was obviously huge for us, and same thing with a lot of the guys this year. Well, and then on top of that, you get your class locked in early. You save a couple scholarships. You get some guys that maybe fall through the cracks, and then the other part is you get a jump start on the next year's recruiting class because, you know, this time two years ago, you'd be so focused on this one signing period now – guys get out on the road, right, and they're able to go and look at the next class, you know, before this signing period as yeah, well a little bit. we spent the last three weeks of January just basically junior recruiting. Yeah. You can't you can't talk to them, but you can go by their school. You can watch them work out, that kind of stuff. Right. So, uh, yeah, we, we're so far uh, ahead of where we've been in the past uh, junior recruiting-wise. I think we, you know, we have over 90 offers out, which last year we had probably 30-something at this time. So really gotten a jump start on that. Um, you know, these last few weekends also we've we've – put a huge emphasis on a preferred walk-ons. Uh, we brought in quite a few unofficial visits the last couple of weeks. And, you know, I can't announce those guys, but that's a real um, big part of our program here. We've had a great success with walk-ons. So that's been a focus as far as the last couple of weeks as well. 11 wins. How much has that helped going around schools? The logo 9-8-9-11 now, four straight bowl years, recognition. How have the discussions been influenced by yeah, all the Yeah, high schools talk about, you know, a couple things. Coach Leach, you know, such a huge name. Uh, the 11 wins, and then obviously the voice of the Cougs match. No doubt. <laughs> no, so, well, obviously. They saved that one. Obvious, yeah. It's so the those three things. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> really really put us over the top. But, yeah, it's, it's fun to, you know, uh, you walk in and you don't really have to take a backseat to anybody. Uh, you know, all the exposure around the program, uh, coaches, players, recruits, they all want to talk about it. So it's, it's been a great reception. Well, you just look down the list and you got, I mean, you talk about Nicholas Sheets, right, from South Carolina, and then you go down the list, you're looking at guys from Ohio, Arizona, I mean, Hawaii, Texas, Colorado, I mean, it, it is truly a nationwide brand right now at this point. And it's a testament to what, you know, Coach Leach and the staff has done in the players because, it, I mean, it wasn't so long ago that it was recruiting the West Coast, in the Northwest. Occasionally you get, you know, a kid from Texas or, or something like that. But, I mean, there is a there is a very national flavor to this signing class. And the past couple signing classes, signing days have, have been very similar. And I think that speaks to, you know, what's happening around this program. And it used to be when we, you know, branch out to a Florida or Alabama or wherever, it's basically – it was a guy no one else wanted. You know, you're right. taking a chance on a guy right. no one else wanted. Now we're, you know, we're out recruiting people, and and uh, yeah, it's definitely a national brand. Do you, Sorry, go ahead. Do you have coaches reaching out to you more than in the past? Where I mean, obviously, you guys are doing your due diligence across the country, but do you have people reaching out to you because of that as well? Yeah, and I think more so like these these juniors and, and even sophomores freshmen they're just because of the last four years the exposure of the program washington state's on the map now you know a lot of times you know five six years ago no one grew up watching washington state football um so for for them to you know be able to watch turn on the tv watch our games see us win uh, recognize you know uh, martin stadium and coach leach uh, that's done a lot for us who's here already early enrollees is anybody here yeah there's quite a few okay. um gunner cruz is here yeah Okay. Heck of a guy. Yeah. Is he? Can spin it? Right? <laughs> well, he's a quarterback. Yeah, he's, he's a quarterback. So he's, uh, you know. Billy Pospisil is here. Okay. Then a bunch of those uh, DBs that we signed, the junior okay. college kids, they're all here. Okay. Uh, Bryce Beekman, Daniel Isom, uh, Derek Langford, uh, Shaman Morris. And that's more than ever, right, for early enrollees? There's quite a few, yeah. yeah. So it'll be fun to see him go through spring and – uh, especially, you know, in the, the secondary where we're replacing some guys. It'll be good to have those bodies there. The schedule for – because the spring game is in uh, Martin Stadium this year. So – I heard a rumor that – Maybe your voice will be over the loudspeaker. Oh, I don't know about that. That's, that's news to me. Heard a rumor. I mean, you're informing me of such things. You're I don't blushing. Know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm like, I think Glenn has something to say about that. Um, what's uh, What's the schedule like for practice? When do the guys get started with anything official, workout wise, moving forward to spring ball? Yeah, we go from. Uh, 
that Thursday after spring break, I believe it's March 21st, all the way through April 23rd. We practice every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Uh, so we'll have 15 practices. The 14th one will be the spring game here in Martin Stadium, which is a change up from our first seven spring games. They were all at Joe Alby. So right. really excited for you know people to get back on campus in the spring. I think it'll be a neat experience. And then we, we come back the following Tuesday for our 15th practice. How do you feel about the whole class? I mean, you've had a lot of time now since the first signing day to this signing day, but you, you've also had a lot of time, more time to process it since we last spoke with, with signing day number one. Yeah, we, we, I feel like we signed those guys, you know, a year ago. It's been, <laughs> it's been a while, but uh, it's, it's a really solid class, just top to bottom. We, um, you know, covered a lot of our needs. Obviously, secondary is a huge need for us. Um, and then these last two guys, the emphasis was, um, you know, a couple linemen. So being able to sign three total defensive linemen, uh, four total offensive linemen, that's something Coach Leach is always going to do. We're always going to um, sign numbers at those spots. They're hard to get, um, you know, and sometimes you have to take some chances at O-line and D-line just because, um, you know, big athletic bodies aren't aren't running around. I mean, not everyone looks like Alex Prince. Right, so. that's one hundred percent very intimidating. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. I totally agree. Speaking of which, speaking of big bodies and D, we're, we're on the cusp of talking to Lamont McDougal for the first time. He's a he's a really good looking D lineman. Yeah, it'll be fun to get him out, and he's kind of been, uh, you know, he's got some pent up aggression. He had to sit out a whole year, and <laughs> I think he's looking to hit somebody. So I might. Put a ball in your hands. Oh and no, no, see what yeah, I, I don't think I'd do well. Second the motion. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about the the bull in the. I think it, we'll let Alex do the bull in the ring well, with, with Lamont. When you see guys uh, redshirt for a year and they have to sit out, and a lot of guys are hesitant to, they want to be out there playing. They learn so much. How much does that help? Just the football IQ. Well, I think, you know, as you go in your freshman year and he went into West Virginia and was an All-American and, you know, you get a big head, you start feeling pretty good about yourself. So it's kind of humbling to have to go and sit out. Um, and you can either take it one of two ways. You can just kind of go in redshirt mode or you can take it as a chance to, to get better and, and improve every day. And Lamont's really done that. I mean, he's a he's in the weight room all the time. He's up here with Coach Phelps all the time. Uh, he's a guy that wants to be great. So I think it's really um, – and he, he was a guy last year that he did anything he possibly could to help the team. He played some running back at times and scout team. I mean, uh, he, he's a guy that, uh, you know, was just help, trying to help any way he could. I was going to ask him about that. I, I was watching Thursday Night Football one night, and he ripped off a 50-yard run. He's 300 pounds. He's out, he's out <laughs> running, guys. I need Martin Stadium. It was phenomenal. Incredible action. Which is why I'm even more excited to put that football in your hands <laughs> and, and tell him to I'm, 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 I'm sensing, I'm sensing hostility. If you want me to go up against Lamont, it's not going to go well for me. <laughs> I'm willing to chance it. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Are you coming to the event tonight? If you're coming to the event I'm, tonight, I'll call you, off the dogs. You know the answer to that. I'm flying for basketball to go to Arizona. Oh, the, that, these two will wow. be there. That's right. They play tonight. That's they know they play good. tomorrow. Oh, I need oh, to get there for the whole deal tomorrow. Huh. Is it hard to get from Spokane to Phoenix? I don't know. I think you can fly direct. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow morning there's a flight. I'll look for you. I'm okay. sensing more hostility. I feel, <laughs> I feel attacked. I feel attacked. Thank you, Dave. Con right. Congrats on a, on a great class. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Super Dave Emmerich. We've got Jimmy Price and Nicholas Sheets in, the, twoest, new, the two newest Cougar football recruits. We'll be back with Lamont McDougal in a little bit. We're live here in Coach Leach's office. We'll take a break.
We are live. We're here in Coach Leach's office. It is signing day 2019, signing day number two. Cougar football is the discussion, and we've got Alex Brink and Jessamyn McIntyre here along with yours truly. Let, let, let's get into, because we know the class now. It's 22 new Cougs going back to signing day number one, here to number two. Jimmy Price and Nicholas Sheets are the two newest Cougars to come across, an offensive lineman. Jimmy Price, 6'5", 295 from Tyler, Texas, a, a JUCO transfer, and then Nicholas Sheets, 6'3", 255. But but this transitions now into spring ball. Was was we were just talking to Super Dave a little bit about scheduling. You mentioned it, Jess. Do you move Abe Lucas to the left side? It probably depends on who the quarterback is. If you have a lefty quarterback and Cam Cooper and who that's going to be. But position battles. You know, you've got Peyton Pelour, middle linebacker. He's moved on. So how do you shift that around? And you can start to see early on in spring ball maybe what the coaches envision. And and we're we're kind of getting to that now. We're only about. He said late March, so we're about a month and a half, a little less than that, away from spring ball and trying to figure out depth chart stuff for uh, for fall camp. Well, and Dave alluded to it, one with this class specifically, all the defensive backs, a lot of the junior college kids that are on campus already and some of the high school kids. I mean, I think the defensive backfield is going to be a place where you're going to see a lot of those position battles trying to to fill those cornerback spots with Sean Harper leaving um, Darren and, Moulton. and Darren Moulton leaving, right? And so you're going to see some of that where those guys are going to be in there. There is the middle linebacker conversation. I think that gets filled probably from guys that are already on the roster. Um, you know, as you look at it, but then offensive line to me is is interesting. You know, you take a you take a junior college offensive lineman in Jimmy Price. I mean, the expectation as a junior college player at any time is that you're going to try and come in and compete. You know, right away. And so being able to get Price in, he has some experience. He played at Stephen F. Austin as a freshman. You know, trying to get that a kid like that on campus who can come compete right away and push the guys that are already on the roster so I do I am really interested to see that offensive line battle in the defensive backfield yeah I just love the depth that they've added um just like you were talking about when you get guys with experience they've added you know dbs and specifically who have the experience you have a safety in two corners and then you know obviously on the offensive line I, I, Andre Dillard is, you know, you can't compare him to anyone else. He's mm-hmm. outstanding. He is on everyone's top 50 board when you're looking ahead to the NFL draft. He's projected possibly in the first round. Yep. And, uh, I mean, obviously some of that has to do with the depth in the NFL draft this year. But looking and adding someone who has the experience there, who plays tackle, and then looking at how – impactful Abe Lucas was right he's outstanding as a red shirt freshman and uh, just seeing a wall like that up there I have confidence in him that he could play either side um, and that they'd be able to move him around considering his youth and how dominant he is up there but if you have Jimmy Price better on one side or the other having Abe on the other I know I don't look too head. You know he's got to get here and he's got to compete. But I'm getting very excited about the potential. We're gonna we're gonna talk to Gunnar Cruz. Gunnar, why don't you take a seat here? We'll, we'll, we'll th- throw you in the chair. Gunnar Cruz, a new recruit here for the Cougs in this year's class, quarterback from uh, from Arizona. And Gunnar, how you doing, buddy? Thanks for throwing the headset on. Yeah, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, good to meet you. So this is Alex Brink. Yes, Gunnar, what's going on, man? Alex nice played QB Jessamine. here, of course. This is Justin McIntyre. I'm Matt. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, how long you been on campus? Um, I think it's been right about a month now. So okay. first month on campus. Uh, how's it going it's been going great uh you know I was kind of I mean obviously there's nervousness coming up early and you know how you're gonna adjust and how you're gonna fit in but the team has really just kind of accepted me and the rest of these mid-year guys and it's been great how much of it has just kind of been purely social you're getting to know them and then how much work have you been able to do have you even met everybody yet I mean you just got here right um I mean I've met groups of people obviously the people that are next to me in the locker rooms like Brandon Arcanado and Justice Rogers and then uh, weight room stuff and seven on seven stuff and the runs in the morning, but uh, so I feel like I got a pretty good grasp of most people on the team, and it's been great to meet you know, especially those older guys that aren't always around because they're not in the dorms with us. Sure, for sure. So you jumped in, you got here. You, were you in the class right away? I mean, was it pretty much like you showed up next day? You're in class. Couple days, you're in class. I was, yes, sir. So I came up, you know, a week early so we could move into the dorms yeah. and stuff. And then, yeah, right into class. Get used, to the, weather, get used to the weather a little bit, a little different than Arizona. A little different than Arizona. <laughs> I think yesterday it was 75 in Arizona and yeah, it was sure. snowing here. Of course so it was. It was yeah. Just delete the weather app. Right. Yeah, <laughs> just, yeah, just wait until the spring to start looking at that again. Right. Um, this team really came together. Uh, they had a truly unique bond. Um, this was my seventh year covering this team. Obviously, Alex had played here. Chaz now is fourth. 
we've watched this team for a while now, and they truly seem to have uh, play for each other. Uh, what does that mean to you coming into this class and carrying that along throughout throughout the next four years? Right, that's huge, and I think that's a big reason why they have a, we have a lot of success here is you know the bond that everybody has with each other and. Uh, I think it was pretty cool coming to the locker room and really like nobody has problems with anyone. It's just everybody's friends with everyone and everybody gets along. And uh, my roommate Cassidy Woods, uh, probably the most social guy I know, so he's, <laughs> in, he's he's introducing me to all these people all the time, and I'm getting to meet all these different guys. And uh, I could just tell that that's really what makes this team different than everybody else. You were one of the best quarterbacks in the country coming out of high school, and I think when you know, I think typically fans and and even people around the program, right? We we look at the success of the program but sometimes we take it for granted we don't we don't realize maybe what a young man like you sees out of Washington State so talk a little bit about your recruiting process what you saw in Washington State specifically that made you want to come be a Coug being one of the best players in the country right so you know coming out of Arizona I mean I was 20 minutes outside of Tempe so uh, I got recruited by ASU and but that was when you know coach Graham and, and coach Napier was the staff yeah. over there so uh, obviously, staying home was something that was kind of appealing to me, but I took a trip up to Pullman and the environment here and just it, I love that it's kind of just secluded. It's by itself and everybody is just about the Cougs. So, you know, I came up here and then the relationship I built with, you know, the coaches that recruited me, Coach Phelps, Coach Melee, Coach Leach, uh, that and then obviously getting to play in the air raid and throwing the ball sure. 50 times a game. Something that's you know <laughs> really appealing for a quarterback. Yeah, yeah it is. Well, yeah. When did you visit? What time of year? I came up in April and then I came up in June and then my official visit was in October. Who, who hosted you? On my official, Jarrett Kingston. How was it? It was fun. It was a good time. Uh, they feed us right up here on official <laughs> visits. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good time. Yeah. Uh, you're bu Cassidy Woods is buttering you up to try to get the football. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's what's going this on there. This is my is best it? friend. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's my guy. That's my guy. Uh, you, you, like Alex said, you could really spin it in high school as you watched the air raid. What did it? What was it like watching Gardner and what was going on up here this year? It was fun. I, you know. I, I obviously, I followed it all the way through the summer and, you know, the kind of quarterback competition they had. And I thought it was really cool to see the way Gardner came in and the excitement that just started to build around the program with his, you know, his personality and everything. And, uh, you know, it's great to see the success that he's having right now. And I think that he's put the program in a, you know, a pretty good situation moving forward so that we can continue to build on that success. You come up, you enroll early. You obviously are here because you want to compete and you want to get used to, you know, all the thing. You want to get get into the college experience and all those sort of things. As you head into spring ball, what are some of the things that you're focusing on, personal goals, kind of things you need to work on as you head into the, you know, this open competition, really? Right. Well, number one, when I came up here, was just trying to earn the respect of everybody in the locker room because especially playing quarterback, I feel like it's hard to, you know, get people to follow you or get people to respond to you if, you know, you don't have the respect of them. So just showing up in, in the workouts and in the weight room going hard every time, that's, you know, that was priority number one. And then other than that, you know, getting the playbook down, which the other quarterbacks have been great about, you know, Trey and Connor and Cam have been really good. You know, if I have any questions, it's not – I don't have to hesitate to ask them, and they, they help me out right away. So getting the playbook down and, you know, just seeing where it goes from there and, and getting a feel with the receivers. You talked about throwing the ball 50 times a game, but there's also an e a lot of even ball distribution in this offense. You know, sometimes it looks like backyard ball, just run somebody, get open. So you'll have a lot of targets out there. What does that mean to you as well? Right. I think that's what makes, you know, this offense, this offense is, uh, you know, we could throw it out to the running back for a negative two-yard pass and they'll break it for a 30-yard run. So uh, the playmakers that they have here are, are special. And I could tell just being out there in seven-on-seven seven and getting the throw to these guys, it's been super fun. Yeah, how much have you been able to do that? How much? How much? Have you thrown the ball to Max? Have you thrown the ball to all these guys? I have. I've thrown to all of them. So, we, uh, shoot, I think we've had three seven on sevens now. Okay. Four, four seven on sevens now. So, uh, getting a feel for all of them and Dez and everybody has been fun. One of the things I hear about this is, this is I'm going to pivot hard here to Alex. This is more of an Alex question, but I'm always asking for him, and then I'll let you guys talk. Everybody, quarterbacks. I hear the Gardner. I've heard Trey and and Anthony Gordon. All these guys talk about the QB room, and and you're all studying together. On, on your own, have you already been in that room? Does that room exist yet? Are you getting a sense of who's who and who's where and all that chemistry-wise? Yeah, I feel like, you know, I'm getting a feel for everyone. Like I said, it's, I you know, I was nervous coming in here if there was going to be, you know, they'd turn the shoulder to me and, you know, not try to help me out. But it hasn't been like that at all. They've they've all, you know, accepted me really well. And, you know, even in the in the weight room, Trey's helps me in the weight room. Connor's with me in morning runs, making sure. Because uh, coming in mid-year, you're kind of thrown into the fire. Right. So uh, it's been super nice to have those guys along the way, and you know they've been helping me out and, and learning. Well, I think what's really interesting is is as a quarterback, you know, it's really the the only position where there's one guy on the field, right? And, you know, a receiver, there's four or five guys, and at the offensive line position, there's five guys, and and 
but one guy gets to play. But it is truly the position where off the field, you're all working together to, to try and find success. I'll never forget when I came to Washington State, Tim Rosenbaugh was our quarterback coach, and he played here too. And we're all in the room. He said, look, when we are – when we were in between the lines, we were competing, and we're competing with each other, and one of you is going to play. But when we were outside of it, when we're in this room, when we're in that quarterback room, we were working together to make sure that whoever is the guy is going to have the most success possible, and then ultimately the team has the most success possible. And that's what I, you know, that's what I always found with with our quarterback room, guys that you know Gary Rogers and and Cole Morgan and Josh Swagger and all these guys that I was with. We were great friends off the field. We helped each other off the field. And we, sure, we competed on the field, but you know, part of being a quarterback is understanding that only one guy gets to play, and we're all, you know, we're all trying to make that guy as successful as possible. It feels like that's a huge part of the experience for, for the, that fans don't know that fans that the I always hear all these quarterbacks. Every quarterback I ever talk, talk to talks about the QB room and the group of QBs, not just. It wasn't just Gardner last year. It was Casey Brink. It was Connor Neville. It was all these other guys who were part of that process. And so there's all these guys I'm sure you're meeting. No, definitely, 100%. And I, look, it's important because, uh, you know, they're out there taking reps. Sometimes they can see things that you can't see. So that open line of communication is really essential to success. Welcome to Pullman. <laughs> yeah, yes, Welcome. Sir. Congratulations. Oh, you should be. You Thank should you. be. It's great to talk to you. That's awesome. That's yes, Gunnar Cruz. We're going to take a break. We're talking signing day 2019. We're talking Cougar football. Here's signing day 2019 on the Washington State IMG Sports Network. Office and really excited to be joined along with Jessamine and Alex. Lamont McDougal, Lamont, you're off a red shirt year. You came here from Morgantown, West Virginia. Yes, your, your father, Stocker, new coach, Leach. And so here you are as a Coug with some great Coug baseball swag on, by yeah, the way. Phenomenal. It. Thanks for throwing the headset on. Appreciate Definitely. you coming by here. Yeah. I bet you're chomping at the bit to get started, I'm aren't you? Excited. I bet you. It's because you've been, you and fans don't know you. They don't know what you've been doing. I have watched you working your tail off every practice, but not able to play in the game because you're redshirting. Yeah. How excited are you, redshirt? You were, you were a freshman All-American yeah. at West Virginia. Come over here, have to sit out a year, and now you must be ready to go, aren't you? I'm, I'm really excited. It's a long time coming. Yeah. yeah. I, I've I had to been patient. I'm not a patient person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and, and I'm sure for you as an athlete, right, as a, as a competitor, yeah. you knew that, 
even even as good of a season as as Washington State had last year that you could have helped, I'm sure, right on the field. Definitely, and so yeah. now you look at it, Taylor Comfort leaves, Nick Begg graduates. There's yeah. an opportunity for you to come in and, and compete to be a guy. What you know, as you as you get ready for spring ball, what are things that you're looking to do and, and work on in the spring? Um, just keep getting bigger, faster, stronger. Um, I feel like I've progressed a lot during this past season. Like it definitely was a year off for me. Um, I made sure I stayed focused, and um, I learned uh, a lot from guys like Taylor and uh, Nick, just watching them and uh, just seeing how the way uh, the team does things. Awesome. Yeah, I think yeah. some people who are maybe casual fans of the sport don't understand that just because they don't see you on Saturday, <laughs> that you're not doing every single bit as much work as every other teammate. We were talking to uh, Dave Emmerich earlier mm -hmm. about what you can learn uh, sitting out. Obviously, you talked about the patience it took, but what have you learned by uh, just not being able to play and having to wait it out and uh, just through observation, I guess? Well, it's really given me like a different – like perspective from the game and um i think it's given me more of appreciation for it honestly how, how much is football part of your family i mean I, w w what's what is your family football history how much is part of your family it's pretty good because <laughs> yeah. your dad played at oklahoma right for yeah. when coach leach was there as the offense coordinator yeah. Yeah. is that what drew you here to pull him in yeah <laughs> <laughs> how much did you know about coach leach before you decided to commit here um i knew quite a lot like my dad like he's pretty much a part of our family or my, cool. yeah and my that's dad cool. talks like cool. every week that's cool yeah, it goes way back it goes yeah. way back uh you were uh playing thursday night football <laughs> with some of the guys mm -hmm. uh, occasionally you were playing running back yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I watched you rip off a 50 yard run <laughs> I can't imagine too many guys were excited about tackling you playing running back, I huh? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> you, how how much fun would it actually be to be running? I gotta ask you. How, how fun was it? Were you just kind of messing around? Um, I'm like begging to get some touches in the game. <laughs> but, like uh, I'd probably only be on like goal line or something like that, or like first down. Which like, to me one, is perfect sure, right let's yeah, get inside sure. the like the, the five <laughs> yeah we'll bring Lamont in yeah and we're on dive nobody's tackling him oh, we're, guaranteed six we're talking we're talking what six foot 305 is, is that what we're clocking in at right yeah, now um, like 300 yeah, 300 so. yeah. Three, yeah, yeah that'll work that's perfect yeah. uh how, how different has it been just from uh West Virginia all the way out here the culture and everything uh, within the team um it's definitely like a tighter group I feel like out here and uh like it's more of like a family like here i don't know how to like explain it but um yeah that's the beautiful thing about this team actually is that's pretty much what they say it's a brotherhood but yeah. only if you're inside of it you can really understand it yeah what about the snow how do you feel about the snow it's different <laughs> it's different, <laughs> it's different. I, I like it though it's different yeah. how about jeff phelps how much have you learned from coach phelps coming here um, I've worked with Coach Phelps a little bit. Um, he's pretty good. Uh, he's definitely helped me with my hands, just learn, learning getting uh, more explosive. I don't like my stance because from the uh, formation I used to play and I was just head up with the like, center like all game. Yeah. And now uh, we move around a little bit more out here, so – Get used to that. Yeah, I think that's interesting because you know Chaz and I, when we're when we're calling the game, we talk a lot about the stem before the before yeah. the snap, and it causes a ton of problems for the offensive line. There's false starts. Mm -hmm. It gets you guys in a great position, right, to, yeah. to shoot the gap, and it's probably kind of fun for you coming from having to play head up. A lot of people don't understand as a as a D lineman. I mean, you're head up and you got to go to war every time with that center. Yeah. That's not a lot of fun, right? Cuz they know it's coming, you know it's coming, but now with with the that stem before before the snap, you're going to be able to get some free free releases, get in there and make some plays in the backfield, huh? Yeah, that's one of the uh, things that uh draw me to here. Yeah, but yeah. thank you Lamont. Thanks for coming by, throwing the headset on. Yeah, really no appreciate you. Yeah, it's yeah, Lamont yeah, McDougal. The first intro, the first public intro for <laughs> Lamont finally. I've been watching Lamont hit practice dummies and drag chains and He's do just the bragging now. Oh yeah, it's great fun. Well, hey, thank you for real. Really yeah, appreciate I it. I had a good time. That's great. Lamont yeah. McDougal here. We're live in Coach Leach's office. We're talking signing day 2019 and, and a little bit of spring football is uh, on the horizon here on the on the uh, you're listening to Cougar football from Learfield IMG College.
We are live here in Coach Leach's office with Jessamine and Alex, and I think we're going to talk to Mason Miller, the old line coach for the Cougs, in just a moment. And this is a, a huge year for him. It was a banner year for maybe the best O line in the country, an O line that gave up fewer than a sack a ball game. I tell you what, for you know, especially for for a guy like Coach Miller to come in from Nevada, take that group that, you know, I mean, you you had to fill in some some new positions. You had some guys that I think were really talented but young. You know, we talk about a guy like Abe Lucas, and so he's got a, a pretty steep learning curve. To be able to get that group to, to gel together and have the success that they did, I mean, and not just in pass protection, which is unbelievable, that stat, but, I mean, there were some things that, you know, Mason added in the running game that were huge for – James Williams and Max Borgie, different schemes, hmm. different wrinkles that we hadn't seen in the past that, you know, I know from talking to Coach Miller that he brought with him and they were, you know, they were integral for the success of the uh, of the Washington State offense. So I tell you what, I mean, I think, you know, the, this offensive line group is in certainly capable hands, but it's it's great because I know that he know the guys he's bringing in. He's got a very specific plan for them. Go ahead, throw that. Headset Speak on of the man. devil. Yeah, Speak of the I'm just, devil. I'm just Mason love coming just, in with the husky killer. I'm he, just praising you. He, he tells me, yeah, he he lies so <laughs> oh, in depth. Yeah. No uh, lies about the uh, the no, big uh, boy. Dude, I love Man, I love it. I well, love it. congratulations, Coach. Obviously, we just want to ask you about Jimmy Price. What does it mean to get someone with a little experience on this signing mm -hmm. day? Really excited about him. Um, normally, uh, you know, we like to develop guys, you know, high school guys and go from there. But it was a unique situation with Jimmy. Uh, I knew his – he's a he's a four two four. so, I mean, he played at Stephen F. Austin and played as a true freshman uh, and then went to junior college and then, and then came here. But – I knew his coach from Stephen F. Austin. He and I had known each other, uh, Billy Best. He's now the tight ends coach at, at Rice. And he had kind of said, hey, you know, you might want to put this guy on your radar. I said, you know, we got some guys, this, that, and the other. Well, we go down to bowl practice, and another one of our friends uh, that was an incarnate word, Cody Creel, comes up to me and goes, hey, that big tackle over at Tyler, you should probably get on him. He looks just like your guys. And I'm like, mm. all right, that's twice. <laughs> so, maybe, <laughs> so maybe we should get over there. And so right after uh, right after the bowl break and everything, we, we – uh, Got out on the road once we could and went and saw him. Really liked the kid, unique kid, uh, big kid. I mean, he's 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 all of uh, what you want. Uh, really looking forward to working with him. Well, and he's got some experience at playing as a freshman, which is nice, and then obviously the junior college experience. That, to me, has got to bode well for him coming in here having a chance to compete. It does, and I think the other thing is, is we've got some guys on our campus that, that are going to compete this spring, and obviously we're looking for somebody to go in that – left tackle spot and then, you know, encouraging other guys to, to steal jobs from the guys yeah. in front of them. But, yeah, and even if even, – the beauty of it, even if, even if he doesn't end up starting for us, he can redshirt still. You're right. Mm -hmm. And so it will add some depth into that class with Abe and Brian Green, you know, where we only have two guys in there. So right. it's a win-win for us. Um, really excited about him uh, and, and the other three that we signed in the first signing class. Are either of – any of those guys on campus right now? No, none of them are. Um, they will all be here in – well, Jimmy will be here in May, and then the rest of them will be here in June. It's amazing how much you return, really. I mean, I know obviously you lose maybe a first-round NFL draft pick in Andre Dillard, but you also have got all this talent back on an O-line that – I, I you, and you know, I know you know in your mind the sacks you allowed because that's how you tick, but fans don't because there were very so few of them. Um, it's an amazing year that you guys had. It really is. Well, a lot of that has – you know, I think they're all relative, and a lot of people don't quite understand that. I was watching a Super Bowl preview, and Dante Scarnecchia was talking with the Patriots. and You know, we're all kind of recluses. Don't talk about it. Don't look at it. You, you know, you'll jinx it. <laughs> um, you just kind of work, and football's a funny game where if the more you talk about it, the, the, the flip side of it's going to happen. It's Murphy's Law at its finest. But – you know, these kids did a lot of uh, work hard in the off season. I know I've said that a hundred times, and obviously losing Dre, uh, you know, is going to be significant for us. But again, we've got guys that are they're working every day. Well, and isn't it? I mean, you know, they put in the work in the off season and, and the training and and all those sort of things. But to me, offensive line and the success of offensive line is so much about communication, mm -hmm. and the communication is built from 
being together and being in, you know, being in their room together and spending time together. And, and it's not just in the facility, but it's outside the facility and that sort of thing. And so do you find that with your group and your relationship with them? Cause I know you're, you're really close to them. You're doing things with them outside of this facility that that plays a role in the success as well. Uh, 100%. I think it's, um, you have to spend time with each other in order to be able to talk to each other. In today's age, that's a little bit more challenging because they're all staring at their, their little phone all day long. And they, <laughs> you know, they think that's the only way they can talk to each other. They'll be sitting two feet apart and text each other. But So we, we have to come up with different ways to get them to communicate, um, and they do that. Uh, and I thought they've done that throughout the, the season. And then, you know, some of the times you have to put the onus on them to communicate to each other. So, you know, one of the, one of the things I'll do is I'll tell one of them something. And say, make sure everybody knows, and if anybody's late, it's it's your fault. Oh. <laughs> so that's a good it. idea. <laughs> so they all got to like, oh, and they're gonna run around and start talking to each other. Yeah. You know, so it's little things like that where you you have to find things to. I think it's funny, but they probably don't. <laughs> I enjoy certain things like that. From the outside, when it comes to the offensive line, it feels like if you're not talking about that group, then everything's good. You know, mm -hmm. they only get talked about when, you know, quarterbacks are getting hit. Who, uh, you know, we had this, you know, uh, the same starting five all, se all season long, which is amazing. Who aren't we talking about that we might be start to this well, year? Well, ironically, and we didn't know this, but, we, you know, Robert Valencia started the bowl game for us. Right, yes. right. And right. so, I mean, there's a guy who, who – doesn't doesn't play doesn't play a whole lot. I mean, he plays in games, and but as a starter was you know didn't play, and then comes in and plays a bowl game, which and had a huge impact on a on a really good defense from Iowa State. Um, so I mean, guys like that, like the Jared Kingston's, the Cade Beresfords, the Brian Greens, um, Hunter McGinn. I mean, we've got a whole bunch of those guys that are that are floating around. Uh, the one that I always point to is the guys that you never you you never hear is the Seth Yosts of the world. He was a walk-on kid from Coeur d'Alene area. And, you know, he goes out there every day and makes sure our defense has a good look. You know, those are the kids that, that, that make the difference, in my opinion. You know, you want to have as many of those guys that go down there and know the standard and want to compete and make our defense as as good as they can be. Just like when uh, Lamont was sitting in here a minute ago, Lamont redshirted last year. And I promise you, Fred Maui Go will tell you that's the best nose guard he played against all last year. Wow. wow. I mean, he would just be like, no, because when – I call him McNugget. When McNugget wants to go, <laughs> I mean, he just he, – he's straight rolling people. Yeah. Well, we're here with Mason Miller, O-line coach for the Cougs. It's signing day 2019 number two. You, you knew what you were getting into when you, you came to work with Coach Leach once again because mm -hmm. you go way back with Coach Leach. How fun is it as an O-line coach to coach in a system where – and Jess is right. The, the O-line gets talked about – it's it, a little bit only when there are mistakes. However, if there ever was a system where O-line is shown as important, gets magnified, Coach Leach with the air raid and the emphasis he put on it recruiting-wise, he's an old O-line coach, he's an O-line guy. Got to be big picture, super fun to coach O-line, specifically with Coach Leach and the air raid in this system. 100% uh, agreed. The uh, The neat thing for me is when I was playing, he was, he was the O-line coach. So a lot of the things that we talk about, uh, sometimes are things that he actually said when he was coaching us that he probably has forgotten about. <laughs> um, and vice versa, like, you can have a conversation with him and it not be like speaking Mandarin. I mean, they they kind of go, okay, he gets it. You know, I've worked for some head coaches that, that just, in, in in their own way, don't understand, like, yeah, you can't do that. It's about numbers. Like, we've got five people. We can only block – the five people that we, you know, <laughs> five is less than six. Wait, okay? You can't block you can't. all six. No, I mean, I don't, I, I don't, I don't understand this. This is a, one this of my, one of my, <laughs> in the same way. Oh, trust me, one of my truly closest <laughs> friends. That's the quarterback saying that yeah, too. Okay. <laughs> that, that's exactly what I'm saying. One of my closest <laughs> friends, Matt Mummy, is the offensive coordinator at Nevada, and I would literally want to come across the table. He's like, I, I don't understand. They're only bringing six. Yeah, but there's like seven of them up there, and I don't know which six are coming. You yeah, know, right when they all line up on the line of scrimmage, but. No, it's it's fun to talk to him. You know, and the thing that was kind of caught me off guard is when I we come in here every day. The first thing we watch is one on one pass rush. Hmm. So it's like the first you walk in the room and it's like, oh, my guys are up. I got my turn. Yes, my turn. <laughs> I I experienced this too. When a couple of springs ago, I did the same. Came and sat in and watched some film and and was fortunate to do it. And we walked in and you know we we're going to watch offensive film. And as a quarterback and as a former player, I mean, we used the first thing we used to watch was. Skelly. We used to watch seven on seven. That was we, all the time, right? And so we walk in and start watching O line, D line, one on ones. And Coach Leach is commenting on everyone. And mm -hmm. he's asking 
you know, the offensive line coach, hey, you know, what's he doing? What do you think about that? So I can only, ima- I can yeah, only no, imagine. So, you know, we again, we that's kind of fun for me. Um, I enjoy that stuff. And then, you know, scheme, schematics, nothing's changed since 1994. So, I mean, it's not. It's not that. It's not that different. <laughs> it's a pretty special year, to say the least. It Eleven was. wins, winningest year ever. How much can you feel the carryover and the momentum? You've been here one year, but you've been in a lot of places. You've been coaching football a long time. In terms of reloading, in terms of momentum into a spring from one season to another, can you feel that the the kind of momentum of the train down the tracks? One hundred percent. I think the biggest thing, and Coach Leach has said this, the biggest thing that I thought about last year's team is they were coachable. There was not this I know everything mentality by these kids. Now, what's happening now is that they're like, oh, I bought in and, and we did what we were asked to do and we competed every day and, and we won 11 games. Well, what, what happens if I take it one more step? And, and so you can see that. So out on the road recruiting, like Liam's text me, hey, what do you want us to, you know, what should we be doing? I'm like, why don't we take a deep breath? <laughs> okay, just lift some weights for a second and let me get off the road, you know. But they're all chomping at the bit. Mm. And so you can definitely see that. Um, they're, they're, you know, I think this is a special place. I really don't, you know, I know I'm biased in this, that, and the other, but we have a bunch of guys in our room, in our, in this building that want to play football every single day. You know, honestly, every person that's sat in in that chair today has said that exact same thing. There's a culture that's built here. Mm -hmm. And I I don't know, as uh, one of, um, I guess you haven't been here all that long with coach, you do go way back with him. Did you feel it immediately? Was it this season? Did it? Did it build up throughout the season? I always thought that the kids here worked hard. Like when I walked in the door, they I mean, that's non negotiable. We're gonna work every day, we're gonna give honest effort, and if you don't, you're you're probably not gonna last. And that's kind of one of the things we tell kids in recruiting. So if they're one that wants to take pictures and have things sent to them every five seconds and all that, you're not gonna make it. Okay, but nine, eight, nine and eleven will tell you that our way works. Um so you didn't sense it as much I mean, you did sense it. They they knew they could be good and they have been good but now it's kind of taken a different step I kind of relate it back to you know 100 years ago in, Val- in Valdosta Georgia it's kind of like pulling there and they ain't a whole lot to do <laughs> you know and so we just kind of like playing football you know we went out and threw seven on seven and did that you know we were always around each other and everybody kind of in the community you, everybody knew da, da, da. and so that's kind of I, I maybe it had something to do with him when he was down there hmm. you never know so <laughs> Combine's coming up. Andre Dillard projected a potential first-round NFL draft pick. Uh, would be obviously super exciting. Exciting anyway, wherever he goes. He's a great guy, a great kid. But will you be locked in? Will you be busy? How much of that – will you be communicating with him? Will you be, how does that work for you as, a, as his college coach? Uh, ironically, um, the, the, the group he's working with right now, uh, his agent, we had Corbett, the kid that I coached at Nevada last year. He went in the first pick of the second round. Okay. So there was some – we kind of knew each other and Corbett and this, that, and the other. So, actually, I kind of talked to him, tried to talk to him once every two weeks. Going up to the senior bowl, it was probably once a week. Um, actually, right after we got done playing, he, like two days later, he calls me and asks me some question. I'm like, man, aren't you tired of me yet? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, good kid. I went down, got to go down to the senior bowl, uh, got to see him and Gardner work. Uh, both, I thought, did a tremendous job. Um, uh, competed real, you know. It's it's better to see them in that setting because the reps are different. Um, so when you go into that senior bowl, they're not watching film and study, and they're just kind of observing what they're doing, and then they're not watching the other team. Mm. So it's just kind of like go out there and play. The week leading up to that's more important to scouts than the game itself. One hundred percent. They want to see how their practice habits yeah. are. Are they working hard? Um, are they, you know? So uh, I've kind of backed off a little bit. I know Corbett was down there with him in Irvine, uh, so I'll ask Corbett and then. Some different guys that they're working with, I kind of know. So I get updates. Um, I don't want to look to, you know, it's one of those things where, again, I'm superstitious. You don't want to look at the, the <laughs> unicorn. He might run away. Um, but, no, he's worked hard. He's a, he's a testament of, of what hard work will do. And and hopefully these young men that, that come in in this, this class and the ones that are downstairs right now understand that if you do these things, these things can happen with you. Now, he's different. I get that. I mean, he's, he's gifted. He's as gifted as I've ever been around. Uh, I thought Austin was last year and then. I met Andre Dillard. So whoever plays left tackle will never be good enough in my mind because I've had two pretty good ones in the, <laughs> in the last two years. But, uh, no, we're looking forward to it. It would be huge for the Cougs. Uh, be huge for our, 
our um, you know recruiting base and, and knowing look we develop offensive linemen here we make all americans we we do all this stuff and it's not you know you, again you can you can go anywhere else but this is how we do things here thank you coach thank Absolutely. you very much we're up against the break we need to take it mason miller outstanding coach. thank you buddy thank you. we'll Good take talk. a break we'll come back you're listening to cougar football learfield img college How exciting are we for Des Patman, uh, Aesop Winston, Tay Martin, Max Borgie? There is no lack of weapons. I was just thinking that we haven't even talked about it. Yeah. This is the, the air raid. Everybody yeah. loves to talk about it. We haven't spoken about a wide receiver today. Crazy. It's <laughs> unbelievable. I mean, yeah. embarrassment of riches, Amazing. right? And with James Williams declaring and leaving early, you're going to see one of these running backs yep. in this class that is going to get time, whether it's, you know, Javonzi Brazil uh, um, or, gosh, I'm just uh, – Jamil Thomas. Jamil Th thank yeah. you, Jamil Thomas out, yeah. of, uh, out of Ohio, Ohio, who's a great looking back. And so I think you might see both of them this year. And so you talk about signing day and how important it is. That's going to be an impact right there. Yeah, and the success that Max Borgie had as a true freshman, it's only going to build momentum for that. Well, how about – Spring ball. I mean, we have like 90 seconds left. We, we don't have enough time to get into it. We should probably keep this going. Right. But, boy, two all the hours. We should have done two <laughs> hours. We've got how many important spring ball battles. You've got quarterback, which we barely touched on. You've got running back, Peyton Fleur, the nickelback spot, the corners. Spring ball is going to be huge. I can't wait. Thank you, guys. Thanks for throwing the headset up. Thank yeah, you. Appreciate thank you. you. Have fun at Northern Quest tonight. I'm sorry I can't we'll join you. We'll see you in Pullman in a couple months for spring game. Yes, you will. Spring game. Yes, you will. Much thanks Mark to it down. all the guests, Dave Emmerich, Mason Miller, Lamont McDougal, Gunnar Cruz, to uh, uh, Jared Prangruber behind the behind the computer there, to Jerry Kylo getting us on the air, Mike Morabito back in the U.S. Bank Network studio. It is Cougar basketball tomorrow night. We'll be live on the air at 5 or 6 o'clock. And uh, thanks for listening. Cougar football, Learfield IMG College. All clear, guys. All right, Beto. Thank you, buddy.